on either side of you. To the west, Nevada. And to the east, Arizona. In Arizona, the Black Mountain Range. And in Nevada is the Newberry Mountain Range. The elevation here is about 530 feet above sea level. And you have to climb a little over 3,000 feet to travel above and out of this valley in either direction. The average amount of rainfall is about 5 inches per taken inch. In some years, we have been well above the average, and the desert shows its wonderful colors. In some years, we have a little to no rain. It just shows you this desert. FAA spent $23 million to facilitate our airport and terminal, including the new 7,500-foot runway, now see on the large embankment, accommodating the new larger passenger aircraft up to a 737 Boeing jet. Modern terminal is located just up the hill to the left of the tower. Bullhead City International Airport supports about 400 flights per week, counting both terminals and excluding our busy season. The history of the Colorado River, the five major dams now making up the reclamation system. The Colorado River begins at an elevation of 14,000 feet up north at a place called Grand Lake. from Denver, Colorado. From there, it has a 1,470-mile journey to the Sea of Cortez. Before the dam was built, the Colorado River had a reddish color from all the sediment washing away the rock and sandstone of the upper Colorado Plateau. millions of years, is known for the building of Baja, California. Baja, as you know, is that long peninsula extending from Southern California southward, creating the Sea of Cortez between Baja and to create another land mass. Early pioneers called this river too thick to drink and too thin to plow, and even said that no man would ever live in this God-forsaken place because it was just too dry. They would be amazed if alive today to see what has become of this desert. Back in the fall and winter, this river was nothing more than a trickle of water not enough water for man or beast. Still, they came and tried their hand at living along its banks, farming and ranching. Sometimes they found themselves wiped out by the spring runoff from the mountains, such as floods. They might have felt lucky in the river dried up and changed its course, buried the homes and fields. There is the story of a man who lived in Yuma, Arizona. One night while he was asleep, the river up and changed its course. The next day, he was high and dry, but discovered he was now living in California. Or he went to bed in California and woke up in Arizona. Either way, it shows you the power of this river and the need to control it to be of use to anyone. 
far as we know, there has only been one man to travel the entire length of this river from Colorado to Mexico. His name was Jamie O'Pai O'Pat. He managed this track in 1825 and 1826 while roaming this river traffic beaver. He succeeded where others only tried to fail. It is not unusual to occasionally have someone who grew up in Davis Camp join us on one of our cruises, telling us about their experiences growing up along this river and amazed at the changes in the childhood community. One such gentleman joined us not long ago and shared with us how they got rid of those wooden bridges, probably not the way they were doing today. They just set them on fire and burned them in place. One of them, after being set ablaze, just burned for hours dropping down into the water and continued burning as it floated down the river. It floated under one of the bridges, not yet ready to burn, and caught in on fire. In 
casinos wanted a bridge to shorten the drive for their employees and patrons. But of course, the states were not interested in spending more money. So, Mr. Hoffman went to the Just below and south of us, 
Parker Dam is near Parker, Arizona, and the Imperial Dam is near Yuma. Parker Dam backs up Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu is basically a reservoir for the city of Los Angeles. A billion gallons of water each day are pumped from near Lake Havasu to Los Angeles, across the mountain and the desert, to quench the thirst of an ever demanding population. This is an aqueduct capable of handling a billion gallons of minute crossing southern. to your table through your supermarket. Fourth Dam is Davis Dam, directly in front of it. It was started in 1938, completed in 1953. Construction was halted for a brief time during World War II. This is the first project the government sponsored after the war. It cost $67 million to build Davis Dam, and was finally paid off in the year 2000. Still considered a bargain today. Our dam system has generated billions of treasure through the sale of hydroelectricity. We'll get back to Davis Dam in just a moment. I want to tell you about the brand new dam built on the Colorado River. Land Canyon Dam near Page, Arizona. It was completed in 1965. And that's a miles and a boating area of 2,500 square miles. There is one more dam built on the Colorado River, Yuma, located only 50 feet above sea level. As the water left Imperial Valley, it would be quickly contaminated with salt water as it headed towards the Sea of Cortez. The Mexican government decided they wanted their own freshwater source, so they built a dam in Mexico. Because of the dam being built, not one drop of water now makes it to the Sea of Cortez. This entire body of water is used up along the way to be used and exploited for man to keep the West alive. Fishing is usually pretty good along the Colorado River. Since Lake Havasu runs only around 30 feet deep, water temperatures in the summer months are around 80 degrees. Trout and flat bass don't like those so they tend to migrate to this area, creating a fish paradise. Remember what I told you earlier that the water was a kid. The water we are on comes through Davis Dam, three generators out of the bottom of the